Hey everybody, Brett from Stardew's Gaming here, back with uh, something a little bit different uh, that I'm going to try out. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. So, the plan is, or the the background behind this anyway, is uh, I have sort of been mulling around the idea of making a Warband mod in my head. And uh, haven't really been able to motivate myself to go ahead and do it. So, um, you know, I had concerns about whether or not I'd have the time to finish it and then of course like I've got to worry about the YouTube channel so what I decided that I would do is I'm going to turn it into a series so rather than like a let's play this is going to be a let's make a mod um, where I'm going to basically use my work on making this mod um, as a series of basically like tutorials for you guys uh, because I constantly get requests for Warband modding tutorials, and I never really know what to cover. People just want to, you know, see more, but I don't really know what else to do. So hopefully, in the process of doing this series, I will have covered most, if not everything, that you guys will need to know. Now that said, the, the word mod might be a little bit misleading here, because this is really going to be more of a sub-mod. Um, I am not actually going to be, use the, going to be using the module system to make a mod from scratch. Uh, I'm going to be using the mod that we're currently looking at right here uh, as a basis for the mod that I'm going to make and I'll just be adding on to this existing mod rather than again making a new one from scratch because I don't know Python. I'm not about to go learn Python just to make a warband mod. Python is a very outdated scripting language and uh, frankly if you want to learn a scripting language to make mods go start learning C Sharp because by the time you're done uh, Bannerlord will be out and uh, you'll be able to mod that but uh, yeah don't go out and learn Python now if you don't know it already because uh, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good in the future so um, anyway again sub mod we're going to be using this diplomacy plus companions 0.97 uh, it's a bit dated it was released in 2013 um, I don't know if the diplomacy in here is entirely up to date but it's probably good enough um, Again, I'm not looking to do anything super crazy here. Um, just wanted to add some additional features into the game because Diplomacy does add some cool stuff. If you aren't familiar with Diplomacy, um, I'll just go through a couple of the highlights here. So you get to choose a faction culture, and that basically overwrites um, your, your AI Lord's recruitment habits. So in native, uh, with no mods or anything, if you were to... You create your own kingdom and then recruit a uh, like a Swadian lord to your kingdom. He would just continue using Swadian troops, and a uh, lord from Rodox would just keep using Rodox troops. So with this, you can set a faction culture, and it overwrites it so that everybody uses that culture's troops in your kingdom. Um, you can also send messengers. Um, you can send out recruiters to do all your recruiting for you you can have trainers to train them for you so you can basically just have like a nice elite army and let your underlings take care of that sort of thing for you um, you can also make demands when enemies request peace which is something that's really cool um, if you are not a king you can try to convince your king to declare war on another kingdom rather than just having to sort of grind out for those quests where certain lords ask you to go start a fight with another kingdom. Um, if you are male, you can marry female vassals, something that uh, female characters can do with male vassals, but not the other way around. Um, set tax rates, release prisoners, negotiate prisoner exchanges. Um, what else? What else? What else? There's other stuff um, that this adds. It, this is just sort of a highlight thing. But anyways, diplomacy is really cool. If you've played like a Clash of Kings, diplomacy is in there. And uh, it adds a lot of stuff that really sort of deepens the experience of running your own faction, um, which I think is important because that is sort of the, I, I wouldn't even call it the end game because really it's sort of like mid game. Um, if you're, you know, not new to the, to the warband experience, if you've been playing for a while, like I have, um, you know, I have, I have let's plays up where we've started our own faction within like the first 10 episodes. It's, it's not hard to do if you know what you're doing. And so, you spend a lot of time uh, as your, you know, your own ruler, and with the sort of shallowness of the base game in that regard, um, it can it can really 
you know, make it a bit stale, I guess. So this is going to add a bunch of cool stuff. That's why I decided to choose it. The other reason um, is the companions uh, bit here, which the description here doesn't really talk about. Um, but essentially what that companions mod does is it adds like 60 or so companions to the game. Uh, you guys, if you've watched any of my Warband Let's Plays, you know that I really like companions. And I love to uh, sort of, you know, have my viewers role play and create characters, which I then use companions to put into the game and, you know, sort of flesh out the world that way. So with a mod like that, uh, that basically gives me um, enough to almost fill an entire party with them, um, it's really, really cool. And then, of course, they can be customized and whatnot um, to, you know, fit whatever purpose you need. Uh, so, that's why I decided to choose this uh, mod as my basis. You can use anything, really. Um, and for what I'm doing, there's probably better choices. But the whole point of this was to be sort of a tutorial as well as making a mod. So I wanted to do something that required some work. Because if it was just like two things and I'm done, then that wouldn't make for a great series. So this is going to require a lot of work on my end. But I think this is a cool place to start. And it will give me a lot of... Uh, opportunity to show you guys various uh, ways to change things. So that said, my sort of idea for this is um, I really like like steampunk stuff is really really cool. Um, I'm like you know not like a steampunk myself, but I do you know like that sort of setting and. Uh, Lately, I've been really wanting to watch Full Metal Alchemist, which is a uh, cool sort of steampunk. Not really steampunk, but it's got like similar elements um, to it. I guess you could call it steampunk. I'm not sure. Uh, there's some people that probably say it is, and some people will probably like ream me for being such an idiot and calling it that. But um, it's got those sort of elements, and so um, I was thinking of like maybe some sort of like vaguely World War One, but not because again we're in Calradia not the real world so we can do things sort of anachronistic to actual World War One. for example we could use like World War One weapons but maybe no tanks or more modern tanks or I don't know all sorts of things we could add in light fantasy elements if we want to I am not entirely sure yet and it'll probably get fleshed out more as we go um, I'm always happy to take your suggestions in that regard, but uh, I just sort of had like a vague idea of that sort of setting. So some of the inspirations that I'm going to be taking uh, in terms of like faction, <clears throat> excuse me, faction design um, are going to be from like Full Metal Alchemist, for example. Um, I think Battlefield 1 has some really cool character designs. So I've actually got all the various factions uh, and images right here. And so I was looking at the character designs on some of these, and I really like, uh, for example, the the Germans in Battlefield One as maybe like the Swadian Empire, uh, particularly the long coats. I like the long coat with the more World War Two style helmet there. So I think for the Swadians, I'll probably go with something like that, uh, a longer coat in sort of a navy color with the red trim the like brass buttons and whatnot and then like a charcoal colored uh you know traditional german world war ii helmet um i think that'll be a, a like a really cool look and uh the the trick there is just to make sure that i have enough red to sort of because you know swadia when you think of the various factions in warband swadia is sort of like the red faction um not in like the the communist sense of red but like each faction sort of has their main color and Swadia is red. So um, while it's only an accent in the uniform, there, you know, it needs to be brought out in other ways. And then obviously the Ottomans here would make a great um, sort of parallel to the Serenids. So we could have like the Serenid Empire. And I do really like uh, pretty much all of these uniforms, actually. Um, I like the longer, again, the longer coats for like infantry, but maybe like a shorter... Um, a shorter, I don't know what to call that, like a battle dress shirt or something for like cavalry. Again, I'm not sure on how the troop trees are going to be designed exactly. So even though this is World War One, we could have like dragoons 
sort of like a more Napoleonic style of uh, army composition. So we'd have, you know, people on horseback with carbines or maybe like uh, early submachine guns rather than, uh, you know, just a bunch of different infantry and some uh, armored vehicles. Because I think, again, the the freedom that we're given based on this fantasy setting is that we can kind of add some anachronistic stuff in there. And so I'll probably be pulling from earlier periods as well, just because the warband gameplay obviously lends itself better to like cavalry combat than vehicle combat, which has been done, but not particularly well. And I'm not against the idea of adding tanks. I think it would be fun to try because I've never tried to put a tank into a game. Uh, although some modders have, and I don't know if it'll be possible doing it the way that I'm doing it rather than the module system, but I'm I'm curious, so I wouldn't mind trying. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, with the, I don't know what faction that is, the Austrio, the Austro-Hungarians, not, that's not right. No, it was Austro-Hungarians. I don't know why I had such a hard time with that. Uh, they look too similar to the Germans, so uh, I probably won't bother using this as inspiration for anything, but I really like these two designs. And then, again, the Americans and the British look very similar, so I'll probably just, you know, kind of fold this into one. And I like the idea of making the Kingdom of Rodox uh, maybe look sort of like this, because they're sort of like the underdog faction that's up in the hills, sort of fighting um, with more, like, hit-and-run tactics and stuff. I don't know why, but I like the idea of just, like, the simple brown uniforms and the... Uh, I'm not sure what that style of helmet is called, but it reminds me of a kettle hat. But when I think of kettle hats in Warband, I think of the uh, Kingdom of Rodox. So that helmet just sort of reminds me of like a more modern version of it. So yeah, I think Rodox would be something like this. Uh, in terms of the Kingdom of Italy, uh, I don't know yet. For the Russians, I was thinking more of like, a again, a great coat, but with like the Ushanka... Uh, like fur hats that they wear or for the officers you know the more traditional cap but rather than this brown because there's already a lot of brown happening here brown and tan uh, maybe like a more olive drab color sort of uh, more along the lines of like the Soviets in World War II with the the traditional like army green color um, but you know just that color on sort of this more World War One style uniform at least that's you know, sort of the idea. And then for the Nords, um, this is where I, I originally got sort of the inspiration for this idea, is I really like the, these are the um, the soldiers at Fort Briggs in Full Metal Alchemist. And uh, I like the blue, you can kind of see, well, you can't really see it better here, but they have these blue uniforms with white trim. And uh, I thought that they would look really cool on a particular model that I saw while I was um, digging through the game files on one of my mods that I've installed. And so I was thinking I'd probably go with something like that. Um, again, the blue with just like simple white trim on sort of a longer coat. Uh, again, with the coats, not so much a great coat though, not anything like this. Uh, it'll be a little bit shorter. You can't really see it in any of these. Um, and then just like a, like a gray-ish helmet. But I was completely lost on um, the... Did I, did I mention... I was talking about Russians. I meant the kingdom or uh, Vagirs. I don't remember if they're kingdom or a conate or whatever the hell they are. Sultanate. No, that's the Serenid Sultanate. Anyway, Vagirs, uh, obviously Russians. And then the Nords. Um, again, something, you know, the blue, white trim. And... Uh, and in regard to uh, the the Kyrgyz, or however you want to pronounce it, I'm going to pronounce it that way because that's how I pronounce it. Um, I have no idea, so you guys will have to help me out with that one because that's sort of a difficult faction to bring into a more modern setting uh, because obviously um, they're inspired by the Mongols. Uh, I think they take a little bit of inspiration from the Huns as well. So, not too sure where to go with that one, but I'm sure you guys can help me come up with something. Um, what else? That's sort of it. I just wanted to talk about my 
idea today and then in the next video we're gonna actually get into the modding um, so I don't know what we'll start with maybe a couple of uniform mock-ups I might start with because I, I'm pretty sure I've got Swadia nailed down so maybe we'll do like a quick mock-up of this uniform or something and try to put it into the game uh, actually I can I don't think you guys will be able to see this, so I'm going to have to change my settings here. But um, I have an idea. Let me pull up. Where is my OpenBRF? So OpenBRF is one of the tools that we'll be using. I'll get more into that in the next video about what sort of tools we'll need and whatnot. Um, let's see here. I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly enough. So we'll, we'll look at that in the next video. But um, I, I have some ideas in regard to like the various models and stuff. We'll be taking a lot from uh, Legla, which is the uh, the Napoleonic Wars mod by uh, was it like Dockham, and then uh, North and South First Manassas is another uh, mod that I think we'll be pulling from because it has very similar. Um, I don't know if the the models are done. They actually might be done by Dockham as well. But they, they look very similar to the style in um, in the other mods. And then maybe we'll be pulling from uh, Parabellum as well, because Parabellum has a lot of the World War One style weapons. And I'm sure there's others, maybe the Red Wars, stuff like that. But we'll be taking bits and pieces from all over the place. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll go through the tools that we're going to need in the next episode. Because uh, we're going to be using basically the same, I think, three or four tools for everything that we do. So I'll leave it there. Uh, again, let me know what you guys think. Do you want to see, like, are you even interested in this series? Um, do you have any ideas regarding, you know, the factions that I was talking about, um, especially the Kyrgyz, uh, but even the, the other ones? Because I'm not 100% on really anything yet, except for maybe the Swadians and uh, Rodox. Um, just because I, I really do like like these two uh, uh, styles a lot. Actually, the Serenids as well. These three um, I like quite a bit. But the other ones I'm still not sure about, especially uh, you know the Kyrgyz. So let me know what you think on that. And then um, if you have any suggestions as to like what we should start with, feel free to drop that in as well. I'll probably, again, go with like uniform mock-ups first. But we could start potentially anywhere, really. Um, and then one last thing before I sign off, I did want to show you guys this. So we're going to be using this quite a bit. Um, and this you'll probably find helpful if you ever want to tweak anything in any of your own mods. So um, this is just a basically a big list of different tweaks that you can make to like scripts or whatever. And there's quite a few of them. Um, it goes, well, they start counting over several times. But there's like, you know, a bunch here and then it goes all the way down. And there's all different categories that are organized. So, like, uh, if you wanted to edit things regarding companions or AI lords, you could do that here. For example, like, um, disabling companion interactions so they won't bitch at each other all the time and you don't have to worry about, like, managing the children in your party. Uh, pretty useful. Um, allowing heroes to be garrisoned. That's kind of cool. So you can, like, role play maybe a, a commander being left in charge of your castle. Um... I think this might be in the game already, but uh, you might find that useful too. Uh, you can set it so that you don't lose honor when you refuse to ransom people. Um, but yeah, there's there's several categories, so combat and troops, uh, village, castle, and town, so basically fiefs. Um, the arena, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know. We'll have to look into that because obviously going from a melee centric uh a melee centric mod setting to like a more rifle and ranged weapon centric one is going to be kind of interesting um so we'll have to figure out how we want to do that and then like different quest things and uh party size and whatnot so anyways this is something um that you guys might find useful i'll have a link to this in the description as well as the uh the mod that we're using if you guys want to check that out um, there's also in this some really, really cool, uh, they've done a complete overhaul of all the banners in the game and they look really fantastic. So, um, 
uh, I recommend checking this out. If you're going to like try to mod along with me, um, you know, and you want to start here, I'll again, I'll have that link for you. I'll have a link to all the tweaks if you guys want to use these. Um, we'll be using a few in my tutorials. Um, there's also one that's not on here that we might do, and you guys have seen this in my Clash of Kings series. Um, there is a way to make it so that you can command your wife to join your party and fight alongside you. Um, in my in season two of our Clash of Kings series, which just started like a week or so ago, um, I've actually done this so that the uh, the daughter of Great John Umber that we married actually fights alongside me in my party, and she's like part of my King's Guard or whatever. It's pretty cool, um, and it, it's a lot of fun because uh, she will still show up in your castle whenever you go home, so you can still interact with her that way. But you can also have her as like sort of a pseudo companion that fights alongside you. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a cool tweak. And it's not on here, but I have it bookmarked, so I'll have to track that down. Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave it here. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys think about all the stuff I've mentioned. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I, again, look forward to seeing your comments and seeing you guys back here for the next video.